Hey guys, Ali Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips, back here at Simcoe Diving in Barrie, Ontario, the, uh, the center of the province. And the province of Ontario is probably one of the best places in the world to live if you're a diver. We're three hours from Florida. <laughs> and the Great Lakes is the best freshwater diving and shipwrecks in the world. Something to think about. Look it up. Anyway, I want to, this, this, this is a very short video, and it is for <clears throat> divers who do their own service and also for technical types that are mechanically inclined. A little bit of information for everybody in here. And this has to do with installing your own hoses. Now, installing your own hoses is really very simple, right? There's a whole thread, O-ring, nice new O-ring. You put it in, you snug it down. That's the problem. How much do you snug it down? And there's a big uh, difference of opinion there because it depends very much on the hose, it depends on the pressure, depends on the manufacturer's specifications. So I'm not going to tell you how much to snug it down. I'm not going to say that the torque is 45 newton meters or whatever it happens to be, whatever number pops into my head. You'll have to check that out yourself. It depends on many, many things. Another reason, by the way, to take your equipment to a scuba professional. You can do it right. And then another a small thing that I'll just throw in for you mechanically inclined people, it's very difficult, not impossible with the right tools, but difficult to apply correct torque in a flat wrench style as opposed to a socket. Another issue to think about. Anyway, let's see what the, one of the problems is. Under other problems, but a brand new O ring, brand new hole, and you put the, sorry about that, and you put the, uh, you put the hose in as tight as you can by hand, and then depending on the manufacturer's specifications, you then tighten the, uh, the, the nut. The square nut, the hex nut on here, you tighten that uh, uh, based on uh, the proper recommendations. And sometimes the recommendations are pretty pretty simple. What they'll often say is, is you do it up until the O-ring contacts the, uh, the metal surface of the regulator, and, uh, and, uh, and then turn it another half turn, quarter to a half turn. Well, a quarter to a half turn is a big difference in there. Uh, some divers, unfortunately, and the reason for this little video, some divers, unfortunately, think it should be very, very tight. You need to realize <coughs> that this hose is not being sealed because you tightened it in tightly. It's being sealed by the O-ring. The O-ring is extremely good. That's, that, what's, that's what creates the seal. Certainly the hose has got to be in so it doesn't come out easily, but it's the O-ring that creates the seal. But some divers unfortunately think that what they ought to do is put it in there oh, oh, nice and tightly and, uh, and, and if they do that then they're doing a good thing. And I want to show you what happens when it breaks? Because this happens fairly frequently. From the looks of the problems I'm having making it break, you wouldn't think it would be something that would happen very often. But it actually does. I've had more than a few regulators in my 50 plus years of service come in and they have had a, a hose fitting break off. Right, let me show you what happens. If I can do it. This looks a little better. <clears throat> So make it tight, down you go, and somebody gets it tight like that, and then all of a sudden, they too tight. Ah, so what's happened? Can you get in here, Kevin, to see what's happened here? And I wasn't pushing, that was still moving. I was putting a bit of weight on it, it wasn't crazy though. So you can see here what's happened. <clears throat> this hose used to have a thread of extension on it, ah, about a half an inch of thread, looked like this. You see both of those, Kev? Yes. Something's missing on this one. <laughs> Got the thread. Son of a gun. It snapped off. And that thread is in there. Now you see there, there's the O-ring. Oh, look. And the right there is the end of this. Right there is the thread. Now what are you going to do? The problem is this. <clears throat> these regulator bodies are made of brass. Very often, these steel fittings are made of steel. They're steel fittings. <laughs> very often, these fittings on the hoses are made of steel. Very commonly, they're made of steel. The, the body is made of brass. Now, that's entirely backwards. Any of you who are mechanically inclined, you know that, <clears throat> that you always make the expensive part out of the hard metal. An engine block is generally made of cast iron. The parts that you attach to that expensive part, you make it of something softer. So for instance, a cylinder head is aluminum and so on. So that if you put a device on and you put it on too tidy and something breaks, it's not the expensive part. Okay, well that's what's happened here. The, in this case, <clears throat> the, the end of the hose thread is broken off and, and, and fortunately it did not destroy the regulator body. 
Now, now what do you do? Well, <laughs> you have two choices, I guess. If you're mechanically inclined, you can actually take this out. I'll show you that in a second. If you're not, you take it to the dive store. And you say, I'm really sorry. This is a nuisance. But I was putting a hose on, and I guess I pushed, I turned the, the, the hose too tightly. And it broke off in there. Can you get it out? And the dive store owner will say, you dummy. No, he won't do that. If he's a good dive store owner, he will say, oh, I'm very, very sorry about that. Shouldn't have happened. But next time, give me a call. I'd be happy to do that for you. Uh, uh, no, no problem. And uh, Leave it with me. It'll take me a day or two to get that out of there. And he will take it out, sell you a new hose. Now, I realize that you don't even have to pay him for this labor, which is going to cost 20 bucks, 30 bucks. But now you have to buy a new hose, which is 40 or $50, and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is something you need to be careful about. How do you get it out? Again, for you mechanical types, there's two ways to get those out. You get what basically is what's called a screw extractor. A little set looks something like this. <clears throat> There's two types, I'm going to show them both to you. Screw extractor, and you choose the one that will fit into that hose end. I think it's going to be this one right here. And you take this screw extractor out of there easily like that, and you put that into the hole. That one's too small, so you choose the right size. We have to go up one size up to this one. And you see that, Kevin? Can you see that screw extractor, what it is? And, and you can't see it very easily there, but if you take a look at it, you'll notice that this screw extractor is left hand. It's a left hand thread. You know so you put the screw extractor into the fitting that's broken off, that's the end of the hose, and you turn it to the left. And what happens is the screw extractor slowly grabs and it starts to move in and it grabs it more. And the more you take it out, the tighter it gets until eventually that fitting that you broke off comes out. There's a problem. These are not expensive. And they're not perfect. <laughs> Here's the problem. As you screw this into the fitting, it spreads the fitting, makes it even tighter. Now, you see what I'm saying? As you screw this in, the taper on there gets tighter and tighter and tighter because it's grabbing the fitting and it's spreading the fitting and making the fitting even tighter into the body of the race. You have to be very, very careful with these or you will end up destroying the regulator. The other type of uh, screw extractor is a little better. They look like this. I'm going to hold this still for a minute, Kevin, while you look at it. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. You'll still stay in focus. Can you see that? You see that? Okay, so what it has, if you take a close look at it, what it has is taper. It has a taper to it. It has four very, very sharp edges. And this is made of, of, of tool steel, very, very hard tool steel. So what you do with this is you tap it in. You need to get the bigger one. You actually tap it in. This won't quite tap in there, so you take you drill to the proper size. I'm, I'm going to say this is one quarter inch. You very carefully drill one quarter inch hole, and then you take this device and you take a hammer. This is a hammer. <laughs> As you do that, those four sharp edges bite into the fitting that you broke off. Okay, and then once you get it in there as far as you can, then you take your wrench and pull it up. The beauty of this particular oh, it's in there. There, there we go. The beauty of this particular one is that within reason, unlike the screw extractor, the, the, the screw type screw extractor, it doesn't spread the fitting. With the other style, this style, as you turn it in, it spreads the fitting. And the fitting gets tighter, makes it harder to get it out. So there's a bit of information for you technical types too. Bottom line, gosh. Take, if you're changing hoses and so on, unless you really have some experience and you're mechanically inclined and feel comfortable that you know what you're doing, take it to the dive store. The guy's been there and he'd love to see you and, and, and take it in and explain what you need. And in most cases, if, if he's a, a good dive store owner, trying to build up a business as, as I did for many, many years, he will say, yeah, I can do that for you. And he'll give you a number. And it'll be a very, very inexpensive number, 20 bucks, and it's done. As opposed to the better part of $100 if you make a mistake. Just a tip. And now you know a bit more about hose fittings and about screw extractors. Hope there was something in there for you guys. Take care. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Talk to you soon.